What is going on? I am an on moose. We are here on the T Moz HQ 18 account, unboosted statues. We're going to take down War Factory. Big, big shout out to all of you who have waited for this video. I love seeing those responses. It's 8.30 in the morning here. I am not forgetting about you. This is first thing after coffee and making bread. Nonetheless, here goes nothing. Let's have a quick scout, see what Gearheart has got for us. Lots of CMOs. That's the first thing that catches the eye. Lots and lots of CMOs. And that rocket launcher right there is going to be problematic. So what we're going to do... First of all, I'm going to focus on these three defenses below the core. If you're a high level, you can just barrage the core and probably do it unboosted. We won't get into that. Anyways, let's do that later on, I should say. We will get into it. Uh, I'm going to throw an artillery right here on the corner of these two shock launchers. That will mark both of them. That is critical, critical stuff. We're going to drop Everspark here into our smoke. Then we're going to flare the far shock launcher. Always, always, always flare the far defense. That way the closest defense is within your range. I realize I probably could have flared the rocket launcher as well. Now, we are very, very close to the shore here, which means we are very, very close to that. Um, Everspark hit by the bug. You'll see anytime a shock blaster hits Everspark while she's trying to use a hack, she will follow her flare. So you need to be super, super careful. It sucks. It's difficult. And I tried to double hack there. Shock blaster stopped that. So now we've got this shock launcher here. And we've got this rocket launcher here. Going to throw all of our gunboat energy on this back, back rocket launcher. Hopefully we can get that down to a reasonable amount of health. Not bad. So um, definitely, if you're going to try to double hack near a shock blaster, realize there's going to be problems. So I lost the delay on that first hit and then got hit by the shock blaster on the second one. So definitely not ideal. We're going to drop Everspark slightly to the right here because we do want to get over to that rocket launcher. Now we need to hit the button and flare that shock launcher. Very, very tempted. Oh, there we go. Houdini. I knew she was going to be close to the edge, but just wasn't quite sure if we could get it. And thankfully we did. So really, really do love pulling off the Houdini hacks. Wasn't sure if she was going to walk on top of those boom mines. It looks like she might have. Everspark loves to die. She's almost as bad as Kavon in that regard. Hopefully now, the fact that those shock blasters have to turn around means that we can get the hack off. Not typically a problem getting off the first hack, but the second hack is sometimes problematic. So now we're going to use our gunboat energy to mark these two shock blasters. Those shock blasters are going to be a pain for us, and so marking them means that our troops will target them. Hopefully, we'll have to wait and find out. But um, now we just need to get some more damage onto those shock blasters and also clear a couple mines in the process. We're one GBE away from getting another artillery, so I'm going to drop some troops over into here. Hope, you know what? Let's move a little bit. That was not a super smart placement. Sitting them next to that uh, sniper tower, not super duper smart. So now I need to get two chests or crates or whatever the heck they're called. So be a little bit smarter than I was. We're going to click retreat once just to make it so they retreat as fast as possible. And then we're going to throw an artillery right here and then retreat. So lost a couple troops there just by not being super duper smart. And now that the rocket launchers are gone, really, it's not a super difficult hit. Um, we're sitting here with three hits left. If we had two, I would probably just come in between these two buildings and just clear it out. But since we've got an extra couple attacks, what I'm going to do is just use Everspark and get rid of a couple of the mortars just to be super, super safe. So push the hack button and then flare the mortar. Always, always push the hack button, see what she targets, and then throw a second a flare, I should say, if you don't like what she's targeted. Now, the other thing to note is she does hack faster if you use a flare. So the hack takes like a quarter of a second to come out. If you don't use a flare, it takes a tenth of a second to come out if you do use a flare. So there is an advantage to using a flare, but the flare has to come out after you push the button. Um, I've detailed that in a couple different videos. If you want proof or info, do let me know. But Overall, this is fairly well set up. Now all we need to do is get rid of a couple of these 
back machine guns because I find that the machine guns where you have to go out of your way to deal with them are just a complete pain and if we can get rid of those it will speed up our attack a little bit and make it so that our troops don't have to go anywhere near Simos which will be helpful as well. Same thing with this shock blaster. It is not in a great spot and it makes me a little bit nervous, but I'm fairly confident that we can walk up and blow this thing up. Uh, otherwise, we would probably drop troops here and farm a bit more GBE, but we've still got two attacks left. I'm fairly certain. There we go, two attacks left. So we should be A-OK -okay at this point. All we really need to do is make sure that we get rid of those two shock blasters and everything should be hunky-dory. Oops, looks like that shock blaster, I didn't realize it reached that right-hand shore, but it looks like it does. So we're going to walk right to about there. Two smokes, always, always two smokes, because if the troops are going to fall out of that smoke, they're going to fall backwards to where they came from for whatever reason. Now we just need to throw one shock right about there and we should be good to go as far as clearing all of the things and the troops will clear the most damage defenses like we talked about so we should be pretty darn great at this point as long as the troops keep clearing slowly but surely towards all of those different defenses we're down to single shot defenses now so Let's get a hack out. That should also help us a little bit. Also, let's get one more hack out. Just Everspark clearing all of the stuff. And now, if we move slightly to the right, we're going to have a problem with that mortar. If we move slightly to the left, there's going to be problems with CMOS and things. So I'm just going to let my troops scatter and do their worst. Let's get one more hack out since Everspark should get that boom cannon towards doing our bidding gonna lose a few extra troops here by not flaring the core I think but at the same time it's going down you can see it we're yelling timber and all of that sort of fun stuff Everspark fairly simple I mean nothing about that was terribly difficult the hacks not super super easy just make sure you stay away from those CMOS and realize that shock blasters if Everspark is hit by a shock launcher or shock blaster she will start to walk to follow the flare well-known bug anyways let's switch it up let's switch to a max account I'll be back in just one second <laughs> Okay, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to use Tank Medic. It is what it is. I figured I'm, I suck with Tank Medic. This is a troop combo that I am worst with. It's world-renowned as being the easiest troop combo. It's kind of like using uh, the noob tube in, ta in Team Fortress. Is it Team Fortress or is that Half-Life? Anyways, let's move right on forward and see if I can take this down using tank medic. I realize some of you are rolling your eyes, but for me, this is the most difficult way to do it because I am terrible with this troop combo. So that is realistically the best way to start, I think. We're going to drop Mr. Bullet out front. We're going to drop all our tanks in behind. And then we're, all we have to do at this point is get one decent shock and we can get all the shock blasters, all of the shock launchers, and then keep our troops moving forward. So now it's just a matter of a race to get our troops forward far enough that we're not going to lose them all and bullet not dying so all we need to do at this point is watch bullets health obviously if we had some bombardiers or some grenadiers in behind this would be going a little bit easier and also if we had troop health troop health just makes all of these sorts of attacks so so much easier um, but i don't have troop health on any of my accounts except for at Mega Crab Time. So Bullet is about to bite the dust, which is going to mean we're getting into Boom Cannons and Doom Cannons, and we have no way to stay alive. So if you would have done this any differently, would love to hear it. We still have a chance of taking it down, but it's going to be very, very tight because we've got all sorts of things shooting us in the face. Let's throw all sorts of artillery towards that Boom Cannon. Really, this just shows that I am not super good at Tank Medic. Um, realistically, this should have been an easy solo, probably. Even just mixing in some bombardiers behind the tanks probably would have made this way easier. And that's kind of the comments that I'm getting from you guys, is that Tank 
most of these things can be soloed, especially if you have troop health or you have mega crab statues. You can just plow through all this stuff. Bullet without troop health. That energy drink is between 35 and 70% less effective. So not super awesome. We're going to go and I'm going to load. Let's see. I think, you know what? I think we can probably finish this with a couple boats of bombardiers. Mm, maybe. Probably not, actually. So what we need to do here is... Ugh, just... I have made a mockery of this. Let's get some actual... I mean, let's use the troops that I'm actually familiar with. Let's get some Zookas loaded. We will use all of my remaining diamonds to get those puppies loaded. And then we'll just come in and do a core hit. So... Tank Medic, complete and utter failure on my part, which isn't a huge surprise, to be completely honest. I am terrible at Tank Medic, but nonetheless, I think we can take this down just using a simple Zooka strategy. Simple is um, not necessarily... Simple is in the eye of the beholder, perhaps? Anyways, let's get all of our ladies up into this nice and friendly kill zone. We'll drop Miss Brick a little bit late. Already on the brink of death, simply because we've already lost the delay. If you don't know what the delay is, please, please do let me know. Now we just watch all of our troops die to some of those Simos. Gonna throw some critters there, some critters there, and then some more critters. And that should just about do it. So, tank medic starter, and then Zuka finish. An option? I wouldn't recommend doing Tank Medic like I did without troop health and without skill, but it's something different. Let me know what I could have done differently on that Tank Medic attack if you would have used Kavan or Everspark, possibly. Um, anyways, that's it for me. That is War Factory. Two ways to beat it. You know what? If you just want to barrage that down, Obviously, that's always an option. Anytime there's no shield generators on Gearheart, you can very, very likely just throw all your artillery and your barrage at the core. This is also a fun one for warriors, but um, I like to treat it as an operation attack. Try something different and fun and try and get those hacks near those Simos. It's tough, but it's fairly satisfying. Anyways, that's all for me. As always, thanks for coming in. I'm Zedmont. Peace.